showing up here. I don't even know if my thing on it is. Okay, you think we have sound now? Um. Okay, you think we have sound now? Um. Leave us, uh, somebody let us know if the sound's working. If they can hear me, they'll know the sound's working, I guess, huh? Leave us, uh, somebody let us know if I the can't see a right trip with it. Yeah. If they can hear me, uh, they can, working, sure. can hear background. Can you hear me talking now? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Yay. Oh, wow. Can you hear me talking yeah. now? Um, can, yes. you okay. <laughs> can you see me? Wonderful. Can you see me? Oh, wow. Yeah. Say yes oh. again. Some of it just need one yes from somebody if you can, can, you see, me? If you can see me. Say yes again. Some of it just need one yes from somebody if you can There's an echo. See me. There's an echo. Um, there's an echo. Okay. There you go. All right. Well, if there's an echo, maybe uh, can you deal with the echo? If you can deal with the echo, uh, we'll go ahead and get right. started. Well, if there's an echo, maybe can you deal with the echo? If you can deal with the okay, echo. Okay, can't I'll hear anything. There is no sound. Wait a minute. No, no, can't, no, can't see you. No, can't see you. Can you see me now? There is a double delay. There is an echo. Oh, dear. Oh dear. That means it's the sound is probably coming through your laptop instead of through the mic here. If they're hearing double echo. Hear you twice. That's not gonna work. Now it's okay. Joni says it's now it's okay. I need to hear from other folks. What are you hearing now? Is it okay? Yes, we can see you. Can you is the echo gone now? Let us know. Is the echo going Can now? hear you, but very low. Five second audio delay. Oh dear. <clears throat> um, what are you going to do, Roger? Oh dear. There's this little thing called OBS that is not behaving today for some reason, and uh, still having that echo. There's this little thing called OBS that is not behaving today. Um, Okay, I don't know what we can do. No echo um, there. Could be louder. Could be louder. No echo, but can see volume low. Oh boy. Can we raise the volume? Mm. Oh, so, still echo. Min minimum audio plus secondary. What does that mean? Audio delay. Well, this is really interesting, isn't it? We <laughs> um, nothing like technical difficulties to um, for um, a sincere effort. Hold on nothing like technical difficulties to one moment. For a sincere effort. What about now? Can you hear? How is the sound now? Can you throw me throw me back into chat so I can see? Can, what about now? Can you hear? How is the sound now? Can you throw me, throw me back into Can still understand you. No, personally, I can deal with the echo. Can still understand you. I meant, no, there is no echo. Okay, I need to hear. There is no echo, and you can hear me. Okay, I need to hear. There is no echo, and uh, we'll wait for your answer on that. Is there a second and, mic um, on? We'll wait for your answer on that. Okay. No, there's no second mic on. You are loud but double. We'll and then somebody says, e no, good sound, no and somebody says, still on. echo. You are loud oh dear, double. I don't know what to do, except maybe just to, um, 
echo, echo, echo. I don't know echo. what to do, except maybe just to... Um, <laughs> how about if we... Uh, how about if we go ahead and start, let's go ahead and start the we, intro uh, video. Um, perhaps there won't be an echo on the, on the intro video start, and maybe Roger can work on this behind the scenes video, while the video's playing. Um, so um, I'll just dispense with all the introductory, and introductory remarks and everything. Uh, so the, the theme, if you can understand this through the echo, the theme is value gradation. And so we're going to play a little, uh, give you a little intro video here to get your juices stimulated for the discussion on value gradation. Okay, you want to go ahead and show that then? To get your juices stimulated or the discussion on value gradation. Gradation, the word gradation, means a gradual change. Value gradation means a gradual change in value. That means that any sequential change from lighter to darker or from darker to lighter in any direction is a value gradation. We can look for two kinds of gradation. A one is continuous where we really can't see where one value ends and the other begins. Now, gradation doesn't have to be the full range of value. It can be a narrow range where the gradation is within a light area, or it can be a light to middle, or it can be a, light, a narrow range of values in the middle value area or middle to dark, any kind of change where a value is getting either lighter or darker is a gradation. The gradation can also be incremental, uh, meaning that there is a gradual change, but we can see where the change takes place, just like in a value scale here. So the two kinds are incremental and continuous. All value gradations are caused by light rays, no matter what the color of something is, no matter even if there is a gradation of color on an image or on a plane. The way the light rays hit it is the way we see that gradation. One way uh, we see incremental gradation is in mountain ranges or in other, uh, other kinds of images in nature where, um, things, whether, where things are moving in the distance, images are moving in the distance, uh, but um, they're moving in such a way that the light catches them sequentially, uh, but in increments. You can see here this range is overall darker. You can squint and see that. This range gets a tiny bit lighter. But we can we can see where this one this uh, value ends and this one begins. I'm looking at the overall value. I know there are other values you see. We'll talk about those later. And then you can see this one, or this in fact, in fact this set of ranges uh, catches the next value, and then this one, and then on back this one, and then further on back like that. That's called aerial perspective. Uh, and it's caused by atmospheric particles that are um, distorting the light, or you say, could say catching the light. Those particles are between us and the image itself. So the, what we're actually seeing here, there's really uh, the same thing going on all the way back, perhaps. Uh, but the way the light's hitting that, uh, and because those atmospheric particles are present, as these get further from us, m more and more uh, atmospheric particles cause these to appear a little bit lighter. Uh, now we see other circumstances where there might be shadows and things uh, that that will go, go grow darker, uh, but this is when something is continuous and pretty much under the same condition. Here we see a different kind of gradation. This is a gradation that enables us to see form, where because of the way the light's shining on this pot, we can see it as a round pot or a rounded pot. That's form. Uh, and we, we, if you look really, really close, if you squint, you'll notice 
that the way the light moves down, the light is catching more strongly at the top here. And then as the image moves away from light, it begins to get slightly, gradually darker. That's continuous. That's a continuous gradation where it's gradually getting darker. And in most of those areas, can't really define where the lighter areas uh, end and the darker areas begin. So that's gradation that uh, shows us form and it's a sequential grad a continuous gradation whereas the mountain gradation is a type of gradation that shows us aerial perspective and it is a sequential uh, or incremental incremental uh, gradation. They're both sequential. When we can switch our attention away from what it is and simply look at what the light is doing or what what is the light causing to happen the light rays uh, then we can begin to see all the subtle gradations as well as the subtle contrast which we addressed last month but all the subtle gradations that cause us to see things that the way we see them now in this image of this corn patch we're seeing gradation enabling us to see form the way the light is falling on these leaves, let's look at this particular um, leaf, I guess you call it a leaf, and you'll notice very subtly it's continuous, uh, a little bit darker here, Not this part is not catching quite so many light rays. This part is catching more light rays. We see a very subtle transition here that goes into a shadow. We still see within that shadow area area gradation and then we see it transitioning again where the light the the, lay, the uh, leaf is turning more towards the light catching the light right here and catching the light right here but notice that this is continuous we don't see a sequential break or we don't see a break in the sequence there uh, as we will see in some images so there is another example of where the gradation shows us form in this case it's the form that's created by the way this leaf is bent. You can look throughout the corn patch and see that. But look at what's going on in the shadows. Again, affected by how the light, uh, what the light rays are doing to it. The shadow areas that are closer to the bottom, this is very subtle, but the shadow areas uh, that are closer to the bottom are darker. And we can see gradual changes, little tiny gradations where the, uh, the, the, the foliage is catching uh, some bounced light or ambient light. Uh, but where it's deep behind those, see how very, very dark it is. Now, if you squint, you'll notice that I'm going to show you uh, an ex extreme blur of that in just a moment so you can see it, how it really is or what we're really seeing behind all that. The, the shadow actually gets a little bit, tiny bit lighter as it comes up closer to where the light is striking. And when I throw this whole thing into an extreme blur, where I've thrown it so out of focus we can see nothing of the imagery anymore, we can only see what the light rays are doing. You can see this magical thing that light does to nature. It's there, it's, it's uh, underlying everything we see, but it's a key to what we can do in our paintings. See how in this particular image, it's darker and gradually gets lighter as it goes to the top. Now it's those little interplays of light and shadow as they are moving upward, as the, the corn, uh, uh, the growth of the corn is moving upward towards the light. And then as it goes into the skylight itself, that's causing that underlying gradation. And you'll see that um, you can see that will, that is evident everywhere. Sometimes it's, it's not a continuous thing throughout the image like it is here. Sometimes you might see an underlying gradation in uh, three or four parts. But this is something that's, that we can be conscious of so that when we are doing our paintings, we're not only uh, controlling contrast of images as they would be moving from deep shadow up towards where the light's hitting by gradually making those those darks just a little bit lighter we can create a richer image of what the light is actually doing there 
In most instances, we're going to see all the ways light create gradation going on in one scene. We will call this gradation within gradation. Now, if we look at this close-up of, of the corn, uh, we can see the gradation, see the gra how the way the light is falling, or uh, how the corn itself is catching the light here, and then moving from the light. So you see the light is on this side over here. You can tell that. Uh, the light is on this side coming kind of in this direction. Tell that by the shadow. You can always find the direction of light uh, by locating where the shadow is going. All this is in the shadow side of the corn, but we see a slight gradation. You see the slight gradation within the light going into the shadow, and then we see that slight gradation in the shadow. That's enabling us to see that as rounded. Otherwise, without the uh, ability for our, the light to gradate, we'd see that flat. If you can imagine, the whole world would be flat if light rays couldn't, uh, couldn't cause things to be gradated. As you bathe your eyes throughout this scene, you see all these different kinds of gradation on the images, on the, uh, the forms themselves, the images themselves. Uh, you can, this, these, these are mostly continuous gradations. But then look beyond those images. Look to how the light is falling on the ground. You can see there a gradation within itself. Now let me show you. When we throw that into a blur, Look just beyond that corn into the background, and you can see how the gradation, how the light is hitting the stronger. The way the light rays are coming down, it looks like a backlight. So when there, we have a backlight, um, where the light, where the light is closest to us, is probably going to be lighter on the ground surface. But you can see that background is lighter. It's gradating behind the corn or behind the images themselves. That is gradation within gradation. And we'll see that all around us when we start looking for it. So let's put all this together now. Value gradation is caused by light rays. It's always sequential. It can be gradual or incremental. Gradation shows us form. It shows us aerial perspective. It shows us underlying gradation, and it shows us gradation within gradation. Maybe a better way to say that is that the way the light rays are falling, they can show us all the things, or our eyes see things the way we see them because the way of the way the light rays are falling. So maybe I've stimulated enough thought here now that you can ask your questions. First thing I'd better do is find out if there's an echo. Um, so I saw, uh, I, I will try to go ahead and answer, hoping the echo is not there. From Serendipity, I saw so the I saw, uh, question of uh, how are you blurring the images. The um, I'm using a desktop publisher, um, and I have a, a, a photo editor on the, desktop on the desktop publisher that and allows me I to have, do, it's uh, called a, uh, 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 oh dear, I've forgotten what it's called, some kind of blur. Uh, anyway, I can take that blur to a great uh, dear, degree of, of uh, blurry uh, anyway, and it just makes it really, really good for being able to show something like this. Uh, everything is okay now. And, and Anne really says the really echo really is back, audio is back, echo is still there. Everything is okay now. And so, um, if you can, it's echoing.
I'm sorry it's echoing. So, Roger has done he everything can. he knows how to do. This it's is echoing. a fault of the OBS software. I'm sorry it's echoing. So, Roger has done everything he knows how to do. This everything is, is set here. And everything is set correctly here. But uh, all, he can't find what's causing the echo. So I'm hoping we can deal with it. And if you find it irritating, I will understand and I'll forgive you for that. Um, so, let's go ahead and start taking your questions about value gradation now. Uh, I, oh, but, uh, speaking of the blurring, our human eyes have this wonderful ability to do the same thing. Uh, we don't really use that ability enough as artists, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do it now, and you can do it along with me, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, a lot of people, when they blur, uh, you, you do squint. A, a, a lot of you squint a lot when you're working. I know you squint like this. You just kind of squint things down just a little bit so that all, all the details fade. You can close one eye and keep the other eye squinting until you get a blur very, very similar to the blur you saw there. You can especially see if you're looking out a window. So if you can learn to do that, you can actually throw a scene into a blur just with your own eyes, just by closing one eye and bringing the other one to a very, very slight, almost closing it, squint till everything will go in, out of focus and you'll be able to see that underlying gradation that we see in landscape um, that light creates depending upon where the light source is. So, um, serendipity suggestions restart. He's already restarted OBS about three times and it didn't. Uh, cannot use art rage for blurring to answer Anne's question there can use art rage art rage doesn't give that ability it's it's not made for for editing photo editing and that sort of thing it's simply made for the painter and so um, you have to go into an editing software to get that uh, uh, and I'm not sure all editing softwares will give you that degree of blurring I can get with the desktop publisher uh, can you enable closed captioning, then turn the sound down? Uh, I don't know about that. Can you enable closed captioning, then turn the sound down? Oh, you do not have that. Okay. All right. So, um, have you tr have you tried the little blurry exercise I just gave you? And if you if you did. Uh, is it working? Have you, can you get that to work for you so that you can you create that blur you with your own eyes without, without having to go uh, to computer working? software? Can you get that to work Give it a try and so see see how that works for you. Let me know. What about um, <laughs> what about gradation? What about gradation as a principle and uh, the points I uh, was bringing um, out about, about the kinds of gradation that light creates and especially how we can use them as artists. Uh, have you got any questions about that? Everybody's concerned about the echo, and I don't blame you. I'm concerned about the echo, too. I'll edit that out later. Everybody's concerned about the echo, and I don't blame you. I'm concerned about Okay, you can edit the echo out. At a later date. Okay, yeah, at a later date. Okay, you can edit the echo out. Okay. Deanna says, I found the background chaotic. What suggestion for filling in with something tractor? Linda says, yes, the blurring with one eye, good idea. Um, now, is it Deanna? Am I pronouncing your name right? Would you please uh, make that a little clearer? You found what background chaotic? And what suggestion with filling in some tractor? I don't, I don't really understand. Uh, maybe it's me. <laughs> maybe I'm a little bit uh, discombobulated from all the technical difficulties. <laughs> so, uh, would you restate that? Uh, and let me see if I can understand it. Uh, questions about edges and use of gradation. What are the questions about edges and use of gradation, Linda? Um, there is uh, the word gradation 
Well, let me say it this way. Every time you soften an edge, you're actually doing a tiny uh, or minimal gradation. You're creating a slight gradation between the edge and what in the in the shape against which it's being softened. The lost edge is uh, let me say one of the ways to create a lost edge is through gradation where we actually gradate one image into another, we usually do that by, or no, don't say usually, one, a good way to do that is by having two images of the same value, where you simply blur, it's a blurring uh, blurring technique we do, that you, where you cre simply create a blur of that edge moving one into the other. Um, but where, the, where there is no gradation uh, at edges is where the edges are very sharp. So that's, uh, if you can ask the question another way, uh, I'm not copying out, I'm just having trouble asking what, uh, understanding what you're asking. I can't see the uh, chat, Roger. I'm not copying out, I'm just having trouble asking what, uh, understanding what you're asking. I can't see the uh, chat, Roger. Um, I, I, can you show me the chat? Yeah. I can't see the chat, Roger. Sorry, y'all. He's still working on it. Oh, here we go. Um, okay. Soft edges. Are soft edges gradations? Yes, they are. still working on it. Every time you have a gradual okay. change in value. Edges, that uh, is a gradation. You can have tiny gradations, and you can have broad uh, gradations. You have okay, Helen says, I Google, make sure your speakers are not on while you're live streaming. You we already got that one checked. Okay, uh, okay. and Linda says, I answered. That's great, <laughs> okay. Uh, other questions about gradation? Okay. One of the and things that is, um, I want to point out that I didn't point out in the uh, intro video, and that is that the larger your painting is, is in realistic I painting, this is realistic painting, painting. and when I say video, realistic, I mean where a broad is, range from impressionistic to uh, photorealistic, uh, where we're dealing with images, where we are dealing with a three-dimensional image uh, trans we're dealing with um, interpreting three-dimensional images into two-dimensional space. That, that uh, anytime we're doing that, whether it's surrealism or, or realism or impressionism, doesn't matter. That as opposed to abstraction, where you would not be using images at all. Now, in, in abstraction, we do use gradation to enable uh, one one color to flow into another. We use value gradation in a, in order to create uh, transitions, visual transitions. But we're talking uh, about the use of gradation here more in terms of what light does in realistic painting, what light does in our environment, in our world, in our visual world, and then how we can use that uh, when we're painting images that are um, translated to be shown uh, as recogni relatively recognizable. I guess maybe that is a... A clumsy way of saying it, but to be shown, uh, um, I know I've forgotten where I was going with that now. Oh yes, oh yes. So, um, one beautiful way to create uh, a visual unity in the in a painting is to be is to be aware of how those light rays are hitting. Uh, but that is more easily done and becomes mo much more important the larger your painting is. So if you're doing a really, really large painting, then it becomes very important that you tune in to how the light is gradating uh, with all your images and how you're making that work in your painting. Uh, whereas if you're painting very small, that is very important when you're painting small, but it, it, it closes down the gradations are not as wide or as broad in the uh, uh, in smaller paintings as they are in larger paintings that just makes a difference uh, so you um, 
Uh, Let's see. Can, can you see the questions over there? That just makes a difference. You're still working on this so thing, aren't you? Um, yeah. Okay. How does one determine if gradations are? This is serendipity. How does one determine if gradations are or should be gradually blurred or more discreet? Uh, how does one determine if you know, gradations are or should be gradually blurred? That or is a matter of how you want to call emphasis to your images. You know, um, blurred blurred images are um, less less uh, blurred images don't pull the eye to them like sharp images do. And so one less, way that we control emphasis, or one way, no, one way, one way we control the emphasis and how we guide the eye as it travels through the painting is through controlling the blur or the degree to which we bring those images into focus. And so where we want the eye to register more clearly, we will have those images more in focus and, and so then in some way throwing other things register, slightly blurred or slightly out of focus is just one way of creating emphasis. The other thing I would suggest to you is that you simply study nature. Now, we know that as I pointed out in the intro video, that aerial perspective, or we can show distance, uh, show things as they move in the distance, we can create distance uh, by making the edges less sharp. As things get smaller, as they move in the distance, things will get smaller, yes. But if you keep it in focus and keep the, sharp, the edges really sharp, it doesn't feel right, doesn't feel in distance. So as those edges, as the things move further in the distance, you sort of slightly blur the images. And the more the so thicker the atmosphere the is as, as it moves in the distance, the distance, you blur. There might be other instances where you would blur. For example, if there is fog, you're going to have a great deal of blur there. Um, and smoke, you have blur, you have the blended or the blurred edges of the smoke. So um, it all depends. It takes to create a gradation. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying that you can't create a gradation with a stiffer brush. I'm just saying that you you have uh, when you're using a more flexible brush, you have uh, more flexibility within the brush itself for the pressure you put on the brush to get those get the blending done. So a gradation is just to do gradation technically is blending. It's it's knowing how to blend knowing how to create the blend that goes from one uh, value to another as well as one color to another. We're talking about value gradation today. So um, I would say that whatever brush you're comfortable with, uh, it, you can you can experiment to see which of your brushes enable you as the way you handle a brush which of your brushes enable you to uh, create better gradations the sound is back the audio is back stop sound and it all depends oh dear maybe just don't play with it anymore let's just deal with whatever's there the tech gods are missing are messing with you I know they are and I'm not happy with them at all <laughs> Are missing, are missing uh, I know they are. Um, okay, I, it said all depends. I think I was talking about, thank you, such a detailed response to audio, audio out again. Oh, dear. Okay, let me go back to all depends. I was talking about, what was I talking about? Was I talking about the brush when I said all depends? Uh, okay, 
Let me go back to it all depends. I was Deanna, you may call me D. Okay, I'll try to remember that. <laughs> I probably won't remember, but I'll try to. How does one determine gradations are gradually blurred or discrete? Well, also I was talking about the brush. Yeah. So, um, if if the if the sound went out and you missed the explanation of the brush or brushes. Ask the question again, and I'll repeat it again. Um, I know this is not going to be fun. I see we've lost some viewers, too. I know this is not fun with all the technical problems and everything. That's just how... Is Mercury in retrograde? Usually Mercury's in retrograde when, when the technical things begin to happen. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for more questions. Or do you have more questions? Or do you already understand gradation? Uh, do you have any problem with um, the medium that you're working in? Usually when uh, when people uh, first begin painting, usually the technique of gradating is one of the first techniques that's taught. So about gradation is that there was a lot of technique being taught how to gradate but not a whole lot about what happens in about nature gradation, with gradation there was a lot sound gone again yeah. how to gradate oh but not a whole lot about yeah. okay it's what time for Diane's going to start cursing pretty soon yeah, sound gone again oh it happened when you unplugged the headphones yeah. okay it's time for sound Diane's gone again start um I don't know what to do about this. Should we just go ahead and end it and try again later? Or I don't know what to do if they can't hear me. I don't know what to do about this. Should we sound just go off ahead and at end it and usually? Later or Sounds like you're throwing gold at uh, someone else is grabbing me. half. <laughs> sounds, sounds back. Sounds, like you're sounds back. Someone else Can someone let me know if sounds back? <laughs> okay, good. What did we miss? Audio's back. Oh gosh. Yeah, I'm seeing the mem I'm seeing viewers drop out. I don't blame I don't blame people for dropping out. Bless those of you that are hanging in tight. We will give you a special uh, word of appreciation. That's about all I've got to give right now. <laughs> Um, what what I don't know I don't know uh, uh, what got cut out and what you actually heard. It has an echo. I'm so sorry. So I uh, if someone could reiterate one of the questions that um, where the sound went out, perhaps I could revisit it. So this is not the way we intended for things to go today. I missed the question about the brush. Okay, okay. It all depends. All right, so I'll go back to the brush and hope that sound holds on. What I was saying there is that um, the kind of brush that the, 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 the more flexible the brush Generally, the more flexible brush, technically, the easier it is to create a gradation. That that is not to say that you can't create a gradation with a stiffer brush, but it's technically trickier to create a gradation with a stiffer brush. So if you have your brush has a little flexibility to to it, it gives you a little bit more control over how gradation goes. But you can easily get wonderful gradations with bristle brushes as well as soft brushes. Now soft brushes are the the uh, softer hair brushes, not the squirrel hairs and the goat hairs and those that are so flexible they have you have no control. 
But the no, softer the hair brushes, hair like the mongoose hairs that have a little bit of flexibility the in them, so do give yeah, beautiful gradations. No but it's a matter of how you hold like the brush, and holding it more at an angle rather than straight on its tip. You wouldn't want to hold it straight on its tip. That just pulls the paint away. But when you hold, uh, hold the brush more at an angle, uh, then you're able to get a better gradation. That just pulls the paint away. Uh, it was just uh, looking, I uh, see, it was Mary, uh, then you're able um, to get a that's Maurice, gradation. by the way, I think. Oh, uh, it was just looking, Mary. I was just looking that up uh, when you said it, Diane. Yes, uh, Mercury is in retrograde. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> it had to be. <laughs> yes, this is being recorded for playback, Phil. Uh, Martha asked, please repeat the instruction. I just did about the brushes. Though I think it depends. Um, came before. Martha, okay. Uh, I hope I covered it that time. I just did. If it's any consolation, my uh, other uh, online class had tech problems as well. Well, I'm glad to know that we're not the only time. ones, but I surely, uh, well, I won't go on about it. Anyway, so, um, one thing I want I wanted to really stress to you about the whole gradation thing, usually, when people are taught gradation, um, they are taught more, how to really gradate to forms. That is, thing. and that's good, you know, because the forms, gradation, gradating forms, is one of the skills that is, that um, is, and that's good. Is we valuable for the painter to to use. But how those forms set in is, light. Um, uh, is one is a skill that is uh, is also very important. So one exercise I would suggest that you might try uh, that might make a make make a difference because you can't use a formula and say you start dark here and you gradually get lighter there and you go dark again here. That's usually a kind of a formula that we'll use for a generic round form. But when the light when when the light's hitting a form. The gradation changes according to how the light is hitting the form. So it would benefit you more if you pay attention to what the light is actually doing. Uh, otherwise, especially if you're if you're painting still life, uh, it's a little bit disconcerting. Someone can do a still life painting. Someone can be technically near perfect, paint beautifully technically rendered still life images. But if those images are are all rendered, or if they, if the gradation in those images are according to a pattern that one follows when doing gradation, rather than consistent with the way the light shines on that whole still life setup, it's going to be disconcerting no matter how well it's painted. If, if, if the gradation doesn't show how the, show the consistency, how the light is shining on it and where, in which direction are those gradations going and how are the shadows falling um, accordingly, then that's going to make a big difference in the um, uh, in the perception or how people are going to be able to perceive your painting. Okay, I'm going to look here now. I got carried away a little bit there and I kind of got behind on the chat things. Uh, is your explanation of gradation applied? No, it does not apply only to oils. It applies to... Well, if I, about the brush, that applies to oils, that applies to acrylic, it applies to gouache, uh, any paint, any medium, and those are the three main ones. Okay, gouache and um, uh, what's the other? Um, casein. Casein and gouache behave very much the same way. Where you are blending pigment, where you're blending pigment, it doesn't matter if it's oil or acrylic, that there are certain, uh, uh, you, 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 you must be aware of the drying time, that sort of thing. But the brush techniques I was explaining are uh, applied to all those. Watercolor brush techniques are a little bit different. 
uh, the, the, the feeling of gradation is the same. The principle of how light shines on images is the same in all media. And you respond to how the light shines on images uh, the same in all media. But we have technical considerations uh, for different kinds of uh, paint. You have technical considerations. Uh, it's different with pastel, the way you would actually approach the work, the actual technique of it. You have watercolor, uh, oil, um, those have di different techniques, but uh, the principle of observation and translation doesn't change. Uh, while practicing, I managed to convert a disc into a ball. I'm so proud of myself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, that's, that's technique. That means that you were technically able to show the gradation and um, the fact that you were able to show technique. that I flat mean, disc turning into what felt like or feels gradation. like or is perceived yeah. as a ball. That you were able to show so that's a good that thing. Flat disc okay. Well, other questions? So that's a good thing. Okay. Um, um, well, I think that if, um, if you really um, if, if you really want to understand um, how gradition that works, that if, um, if your you best really, bet is um, ob observation, really is to observa observe nature. And works, what you're observing you know, is not is the image itself. Now, I say this almost every time, and that is... Uh, as painters, uh, in our emer as emerging painters, we will often, um, sounds gone, oh dear. Yeah, uh, as emerging painters, okay, she's still, great. Okay, as painters, we will often be trying to, we have our attentions focused only on the image. Now, you've heard me say this before if you've been studying with me for a long uh, we, we too often focus on just the image. What that is, that is a field. There are cows in the field. There's blue sky. There's green grass. That sort of stuff. Well, um, that stuff. You're perceiving that stuff the way you perceive it because of the way the light is hitting it, and because of the light is hitting, it's also causing shadows. And those things are what enable you to perceive it the way you do. So if you can switch your attention away from what it is and look at what it's doing, look at what the light rays are doing to it. For example, when you do that little exercise I showed you earlier about how you squint your eye down so they throw everything almost totally out of focus, you will see a pattern of, of gradation of light to dark, especially if you're out in nature. You see, and that what you'll notice of, is of that it's gradating according to where the light is the strongest. It may be, uh, if, if, it's, if it's open space, it may be gradating towards the sky. Or if you're in the woods, it may be gradating from the trees down to the ground where the light is able to filter in on the ground. But you have that little underlying gradation in all of nature. And then, then in the underlying gradation, you have gradation within gradation that I talked about in the intro video. Uh, and if you can if you can observe those things and watch what's actually happening there, make your gradations move accordingly and, and let them be, if they're close, if you see the gradation as a close range, close value range, that's, that's a, um, pay attention to that, that tells you something. Or if it's a wide gradation, if it goes from a, a wide value range of gradation. Uh, that tells you something, so that's important. Or if it's a wide gradation, uh, a wide value range okay. of Okay. Well, they, they, have, they have totally gone dry on questions. <laughs> oh, you have totally gone dry on questions. <laughs> so, I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. We're gonna, I'm going to cut it a little short. Because of the technical problems also, I want to tell you that Roger is in a play this afternoon. And he, uh, he has to report. His play is going to start in about an hour, about an hour and seven minutes. <laughs> so he's going to have to make hay to get to the theater, which is just down the road. Uh, 
Uh, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to answer one more question. I see one coming. I think it's Phil coming up. Uh, could you just translate gradation as just a series of shapes where one large shape can be a series of the same color? Mm -hmm. Well, now, gradation as a general principle itself, every uh, there's all the visual all the visual elements they can all be gradated. Value gradation is, we're, we're just talking just about how the lights gradate to dark. You can have shape gradation, if this is what you're talking about, translate gradation just as a series of shapes where one large shape can be in a series of the same color. Uh, mm, I'm not sure I quite understand that. If you have, uh, if, if you have shapes of the same size, and they, they would either be going in this direction right here or this direction right here or they, they, they would be flat they would be all in a horizontal row if they're the same size a shape that is the same size but has this kind of distance between it the one behind is going to appear smaller and the further that way the distance the further it's going to be that too is a, is a size gradation large to smaller to smaller to smaller um, um, so even the gradation on the images themselves if the shapes themselves have gradation on um, them, uh, so that gradation is going to be determined by the, the shape themselves. of the image the and how the light's shining on it them. and where it's located uh, in space, in distance, where it's located in distance. So I don't know if I answered that correctly. Linda wants to know how about gradating cools and warm to the same value. It can be done, yes. You can, value the cools and warms can change uh, uh, within the same value. That is not value gradation, that is temperature gradation. If, if the cools and warms are graded in the same value, that's one thing that we do in order to create luminescence is to uh, uh, gradate, alternate, and to gradate warms into cools, cools into warms, and that sort of thing. Um, be interested in this question. A, a green shape could have a series of green color. A green shape, yes, could have a series of green color. That'd be gradation of hue. If it's a gradation of, uh, say, a yellow green to a blue green, that can happen. Where, uh, if if they are the remember, color has three parts. Value is one part of color. Where, if you got my newsletter this weekend, if, if you should be aware of that too. Color has three, color has three parts. parts. All three of those parts can gradate. Part Hue can gradate. So For example, if it's going from yellow green, gradually can change to green, gradually can change to cool green. They can blur one into the other. That's hue gradation. Intensity can gradate. If it's a, it can be at the same value where you have one green. And then that green can gradually get more and more neutral and gradually blend. The blend of that green goes from fully saturated to more neutral. That is gradation of saturation or gradation of intensity. Also, you would call it gradation of chroma. And then, of course, value gradation, which is what this is about today. Okay. Yeah, green to lighter, dark to lighter is value gradation. A green that's dark to lighter is value, is a hue of green doing value gradation. Oh my goodness, the question's are coming now. I'm gonna have to shut this down because Roger's gotta get out of here. Uh, how would you manipulate or use the concept of gradation to guide the eye through a painting while still being true to overall gradation of the scene? It happens naturally. Uh, you, you, uh, if you're paying attention to nature, watch what your eyes do. So uh, you're having a uh, if you're if you're following and translating what the light in nature is doing, then the way you're going to guide the eye within that is the way you create the emphasis within that within that whole painting. So um, that's going to ha pretty much happen naturally. Um, Linda might now have time to cover. Might not have time. I have seen gamuts used in gradation. Yes, gamuts can be used in gradation.
So got to go. I'm sorry. Just, we had that lull of no questions, and then I say I've got to go, and all of a sudden questions start coming in. So we got to go. Ron, just get out. Got to get out of here. So listen, thank you all for your tolerance. Uh, love your tutelage, dear lady. Thank you very much, serendipity. I think I'll blush right here in front of God and everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for, for watching. Thank, thank you for hanging in there with us for all this technical difficulty. Uh, I'm hoping we can have all that ironed out and uh, not have this happen again. So you can, we'll do this again in the third Sunday in August. Until then, happy July and keep on painting. Bye now. In the third Sunday in August. Until then, happy July and keep on painting. Bye now. Get out of here. In August, until then, happy July, and keep on painting. Bye now. Get out of here.